Okay, I have to say that today I really wish that we were together hugging and sharing our joy and our hopes. I feel like this has been a week for practicing patience. Well, actually, this has been and will continue to be a year that requires an enormous amount of patience. But sometimes I get frustrated when people talk about having patience because it sounds like something that you can get or you could just do as if you could say, I'm going to be a patient person. This week, I'm going to have more patience. Unfortunately, it, it just doesn't really work that way. It, it's kind of like saying, I think this week I'm going to be a pianist. I've decided I'm going to have the skills to play the piano. I don't know, maybe the violin, and I'm just going to do it. Obviously, we know that that can't happen, and yet we think we can just choose one day to have patience. But patience is more like developing a skill. It's more like a habit, and habits don't change easily. It doesn't happen in one day, but what you can do is make the choice to start spiritual practices, practices that lead to an ongoing habit of living patiently. And that's really true of all of what we call the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. They're not one-time choices. They, they are habits that need to be developed. And you know, this is really what our story is about today. The story from Jesus in our New Testament reading. It's not really about lamps and it's not really about oil. It's really about patience and kindness and caring and all of those fruit of the spirit. Because the truth is things take time and well, we don't like that. We want what we want now. And we don't want to wait. Now at the time of our scripture reading, they didn't want to wait either. And they were waiting for the world to change. They were tired of being the underdogs, living paycheck to paycheck, tired of being caught up in other people's wars and being oppressed and stressed and overwhelmed. And they knew that the scriptures had promised that there would be the day of the Lord someday. God promised there would be justice and equality and peace and abundance. They thought that Jesus was connected to this dream, this thing that they longed for, this change, but they were constantly asking, what would it look like? When was it going to come? They were hoping for answers, but you know, Jesus, it's always a story. So to understand this story, it would help if we know something about the wedding practices and customs of the day. I'm sure weddings were emotional occasions even then, but the guests were gathered for a wedding at the home of the bride. They were entertained by her parents while they waited for the groom. And then when the bridegroom approached, the guests, including the bridesmaids, would light their torches. They would go out to greet the groom and they would all process to the groom's home where his parents were waiting. They would have this wedding ceremony there and an extended banquet that would go on for days. But in our parable today, the groom is late and the hours go by and many of those in the wedding party are falling asleep. Finally, at midnight, they're awakened with a shout, he's coming, he's here, and the bridesmaids leap to action and they light their lamps and they head out into the night to begin the procession. There are 10 bridesmaids and five light their lamps and they are on their way following the groom. But five have used up their oil. There's no reserve. They can't get their lamps lit. Their attempt to borrow from the wiser women is rejected and they have to set out in search for oil, which is not easy to find at midnight. And the pro in that process, the pro procession goes on and they miss it. When they finally get to the groom's home, the doors are locked and they can't come in. 
And Jesus concludes the story with, keep awake, you do not know the day nor the hour. Well, there are actually three parables that speak to this problem of waiting for this hoped for completion of creation, for our longing for life to be the way it was meant to be. The parable before this one, the master comes home sooner than expected and finds servants abusing their power. In this one, the bridegroom arrives arrives later than expected and some are not prepared for the delay. Waiting patiently and, and more importantly, waiting purposefully is the message of this story. What does it mean to be prepared to wait? Jesus is not suggesting that we build bomb shelters or stockpile weapons or canned goods or even oil. So if not oil, what did this oil in the story represent? What did the wise women have that the others were lacking? Maybe it was a lifetime of listening and learning and living. The wise ones represent those who have heard the teachings of Jesus and acted on them day after day which sounds something like what Jesus has said a few chapters earlier. He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. When the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew, it didn't fall because it had been founded on a rock. So the point of this parable is to be living expectantly and hopefully I mean, as long as you're waiting for the kingdom of God to come in its fullness, keep on living as if it's already here. Our hope does rest on our trust that the God who created the world will continue to love this world, will continue this process of creation, this long arc of history that bends towards justice. And it's understandable that people are genuinely frightened about where is human history going? Where is it headed? Sometimes freedom and justice and compassion seem fragile in the face of the forces of oppression and injustice and violence and cruelty. People are understandably afraid just for their own future, facing serious illness, loss of employment. Each of us need to hear this good news that the love of God will continue to appear in our lives and work in this world. So then how do we prepare to wait? In our story, the wise women were prepared for the delay, but but how do we develop these skills, these habits of patience along with peace and love and joy and kindness and self-control. I think the first thing we do is we keep reading and listening and learning. We start with the words of Jesus because you can't act on what you don't know and we also forget a lot. I have to read over again. Then we continue to live in community. This is important for two reasons. For one thing, we can't live this life out alone. And second, it is when we are together that we get on each other's nerves and we hurt each other's feelings and we let each other down and we have to do the hard work of working out our differences. That is a spiritual practice itself. And this practice gives us lots of opportunity to practice patience and love and and understanding how the person who is driving you crazy really thinks and feels and offering forgiveness and accepting forgiveness when you need it. This takes practice. Next, we need to practice prayer, meditation, contemplative kinds of prayer that calm our fragile nerves and make it possible to be patient and to learn and to love. And then we can actually practice justice. Living justly is not as easy as it sounds in a world of powers that don't want that to happen. 
one day at a time, we can keep choosing justice. We can be teaching and tutoring, providing health care, providing food and shelter. We can be a part of addressing the causes of injustice and lobbying for fair legislation. All of these are spiritual practices too. And gradually we will develop the habit of being just and loving people. With the Spirit's guidance, we can build into our lives the disciplines and the habits that keep hope alive, living as people who are already citizens of the kingdom of God. So the oil in this parable can be understood as those habits, that character that results from daily practice, words, and action, choices, practices that result in spiritual reserves that grow and shine in good times as well as the times of waiting patiently. Now, if you think about it, this also explains why the bridesmaids in our story could not share their oil that night. My parents used to say that education is the most important thing you can get because no one can take it away from you. It's also something you can't just hand over to someone at the last minute. It takes time to develop. So just as we cannot share our spiritual reserves and experiences that we've developed over time, those bridesmaids could not just borrow resources that were needed. Now we can share our education with others one day at a time, and over time they will have that same knowledge and experience that we have. We can and we need to share our hope and our faith that the kingdom of God is here among us even when it doesn't look like it. We can and we need to keep living out this vision of love and grace that are found in the words in the teachings of Jesus. Because we know that though the arc of history is long, it bends towards justice. So on any given day, will God find you practicing, preparing, and already participating in this world of patience and kindness and love and peace, this world that is on the way? Will you have oil in your lamp? to light the world.